kind of thing. So let's just start with this one. Fine. So disease, you know what is a disease? If a person is not a mentally, physically, physiologically, or socially sound, then the person is called disease, right? So that definition we have heard it uh, in our childhood time, right? In the ninth class, we listen it ninth class, right? So it's not a new definition. But now we have decided we have uh, divided diseases into two categories. The first kind of disease they are called congenital disease, and the second kind of disease called acquired disease. So look, the disease uh, which uh, the disease with which a human take birth, they are congenital disease, and acquired disease. These diseases develop after birth, when a person takes birth, right? So when we come in this environment, when we come in this world, we acquire those diseases from the external environment. They are called acquired disease. So con uh, congenital disease, what are those diseases? They can be anatomical, physiological, or um, uh, they can be anatomical or physiological abnormality. Anatomical abnormality, you must have seen there is a person like a person have born with a short hand, a person have born with the only one kidney. So they are, they are the anatomical defect, right? If when a person take birth with the defect, right? Another physiological abnormality, there are there may be physiological abnormality that the heart rate is more or uh, um, uh, the particular, like the kidney, the person have both kidney, but both kidneys are not working properly or pancreas is not working properly, right? So they are the physiological abnormalities. They are present since birth. And what is the reason behind it? There may be the reason mutation, chromosomal aberration, or environmental effect. Mutation and chromosomal abnormalities, we have already studied that Clint-Frenter syndrome or uh, the uh, uh, Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, they all are congenital diseases, right? The person take birth with those diseases. Mutation, there may be some genetical defect that a particular kind of the hormone is not being formed, right? They, that is due to the mutation. And uh, environmental factor, right? A person have take birth uh, uh, at uh, like when the, when uh, he was in the womb of the mother and her mother was with a any hazardous, uh, with a hazardous job or uh, the, she was uh, dwelling with the hazardous uh, environment, right? So that impact will be over there. So there may be environmental abnormality, right? Acquired diseases that develop after birth, right? So acquired diseases may be of two types. They develop after birth. We acquire those diseases in a moment. They may be of two types, communicable and non-communicable, right? What are the communicable diseases? Communicable diseases are also called infectious diseases, right? So these diseases comes from the infection and the person who, who are bearing or who have this disease spread the infection of disease right they spread or transfer the organism causal organism to other healthy person right they may be bacterial they may be fungal they may be protozoa for sake of example fungal disease a person have ring guard right that can be spread to the his or her cloth right bacterial disease you must have seen there are certain like tb right tb that is a communicable disease a person having the tb is coughing and sneezing and the person who are around that person will get affected, right? The second diseases are acquired diseases, but they are not communicable. The person acquire these diseases or these diseases comes to a person after the birth, but they are also called non-infectious diseases. They are not communicated to others. For example, a person have an allergy with certain things. So that is not transferable. Uh, the person get affected or uh, hit by the cancer. They are non-communicable diseases. Defi uh, they may be deficiency diseases. A person have the deficiency with certain thing, right? Deficiency of certain nutrient, deficiency of certain hormone, right? So these are kind of the disease. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Either keep on writing down or keep on taking this screenshot, right? After every uh, screen, I say this, but uh, please do that, right? And uh, one more thing, what I suggest you, uh, you have to remember only those things which are there in a screen, right? In this chapter. In case if you want to or, or, or you have time to do some more from the external source, you can do. 
you are free to do but at least whatever written in the uh, this screen you have to remember or uh, or rather than remember you have to cram by heart that thing because here the number of disease, uh, number of the question will be from the causal organism right like this one so this you have to cram it there is no other uh, formula so uh, they are the diseases which are caused by they are they are the some vectors what are the vector vector are basically those an organism which uh, take disease from one point and transfer to some other for sake of example nowadays these are the summer time summer time and you will find the uh, the sugar cane juice everywhere most of the uh, of us love that right but this is highly infectious kind of the juice why uh, what happened when a, the person is uh, squeezing out the sugar cane and uh, throw uh, the waste part of that sugar cane and that waste part that have the fresh glucose and that fresh glucose waste part the development of cholera bacterium vibrio cholerae takes place now the bacteria vibrio cholerae that develop in that uh, waste material of the sugar cane fly visit to those sugar cane part because of the sweetness when fly visit it trap the bacteria in its wing it trap the bacteria the bacteria get stick on the wings in the legs and all that right again then what happened uh, you just have a sugar cane glass or the person is uh, squeezing out the sugar cane on that time that fly will sit over there and transfer the bacteria now the person will again the bacteria require fresh glucose for the fast development right fast multiplication when the bacteria will be transferred to your uh, drink that, that that juice what will happen now the bacteria will start replay, uh, like dividing with a very fast pace and when you will drink they will go inside you right so this is the fly which have transferred that vibrio cholerae bacteria which is responsible for cholera right uh, from the sugar cane waste to your glass right so these are called vector which transfer which transfer there which transfer uh, unintentionally actually uh, they transfer the disease and uh, disease causing organism unintentionally so here you can see this is very very important these all six are very very important uh, they have been asked multiple times i i don't have the count for that right and you will get you will you will see that they have been asked frequently so there is a anopheles mosquito that anopheles female mosquito which spread malaria or carry the pathogen of malaria culex again female culex it carry the uh, organism causal organism for filaria filaria is also known as elephantiasis the leg or lower body part they, they swell like elephant right adis mosquito that is responsible for yellow fever dengue fever and filaria right they can be asked individually or mass the following in the form of mass following house fly it carry the bacteria for the typhoid diarrhea cholera and tb sand fly it um, it carry the bacteria for kala azar right and cc fly that is called cc fly it is a vector for the sleeping sickness disease right is that clear sir what is yellow fever yellow fever actually uh, this is a very wider spread fever which is found in the uh, african continent uh, and the same with the kala azar and sleeping sickness right this yellow fever it's a uh, uh, spread by a bacteria and uh, what happen a fly bite to the, the child this is basically it, it uh, affect the children and they feel very high high fever and sometimes they die right and uh, because of why we call that yellow fever because of the uh, that bacteria that causes harm to the uh, liver part and because of the infection in the liver part the bilirubin get mixed with the blood and uh, like uh, the disease what to say like uh, in this disease uh, mm -hmm. joint dis so in the same way like joint dis the body become pale yellow color right okay sir that is a yellow color but these yellow color that is a later symptom it's a very dangerous kind of disease fine so i have a question for you uh, why all these vectors are female mosquito not male mosquito anopheles female culex female adis female all these vectors are female mosquito not male why sir the male plants male male mosquitoes they only feed on plants because of their uh, structure body structure excellent excellent very good 
very good male male never bite to animals they do not uh, feed on the blood right they are not sangivores these are the females which bite you these are the female which suck your blood right these are the female which spread the disease male mosquito they take they uh, take their food from the nectar of the flower they never bite you they never visit your home right so um, by this way the ob but obvious when the male are not biting you how they can spread disease to you right the mosquito which bite us they are the female only okay now the common viral disease right the common viral disease all of them have been asked like um, you will see either individually or with the match of the following influenza is spread by orthomyxo virus chickenpox varicella virus the smallpox variola virus measles rubella virus rabies lysa virus mumps paramyxo virus polio polio virus hepatitis a hepatitis virus hepatitis b serum hepatitis virus dengue dengue virus right there are only 10 viruses that is that 10 viruses and 10 diseases that you you had to care right take this screenshot not even single question not even single match which have not been asked not there out of this 10 all have been asked most of time they come in the form of match the following again bacterial disease cholera is caused by vibrio cholerae pneumonia and, and this uh, study of molecular genetics we have studied stepto coccus pneumoniae uh, typhoid salmonella typhi tetanus clostridium tetani diphtheria corny bacterium diphtheriae whooping cough that is also known as black cough whooping cough bordetella pertussis sometime whooping cough also known as the pertussis right black cough or pertussis whooping cough then tuberculosis mycobacterium tuberculosis tuberculosis mean tb mycobacterium tuberculosis plague yezerina yezerinia pestis pisu is a small arctic kind of the thing which is found in the mouse and uh, basically uh, the pisu is the vector for this yezerinia pestis so uh, this pisu is responsible for uh, spreading the plague right leprosy virus mycobacterium lepri syphilis trypano uh, 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 tryponema pallidum and gonorrhea nigeria gonorrhea right so there are also 11 diseases and 11 bacteria you have to remember them right take this screen from so 10 viral disease 11 bacterial disease total these are the 21 now the protozoa disease the disease which is called sir, by can you show viral disease once again sir i have yes, taken the screen shot sure 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 viral take this question thank you sir dani welcome now protozoan disease so uh, amoebic dysentery amoebic dysentery the normal dysentery which takes place in which blood and uh, uh, that mucus come out through the stool so it is caused by entamoeba histolytic right uh this is this uh, protozoa entamoeba histolytica is found in dirty water contaminated water and uh, this spread through the contaminated water. malaria that is important malaria is caused by this four organism it is a plasmodium it's kind of protozoa it's a plasmodium plasmodium vivax plasmodium ovelli plasmodium malariae plasmodium falciparum the fourth one is the most dangerous right and uh, next the uh, tiniasis tiniasis that is the uh, disease caused by tinea solium a tapeworm right 
tape worm or tinea solium is the organism of it is not a protozoa it's a organism of platy helminthes phylum okay and uh, the next one ascariasis ascariasis is caused by ascaris lumbricoides right ascariasis is caused by ascaris lumbricoid right that is a round go fine filaria is uh, filaria is also known as elephantiasis we know that it is caused by bucheridia bancrofti and it's a type of platy it's a type of platy helminthes uh, it belongs to platy helminthes phylum right so and ascariasis caused by ascaris lumbricoid they are the round worm what is the phylum of round worm you must have gone through in animal classification phylum of round worm come on guys previously we used to call it nematoda nowadays round worm come under the phylum ascalmenthes okay take this screenshot now there are some common diseases right first typhoid is a disease kind of disease it is caused by salmonella typhi it's a bacteria typhoid infect the intestine the part of organ that infect that is intestine it is common in the uh, child of 1 to 15 year it is transmitted through contaminated food and water the vector for typhoid is house fly and the most important thing which have been asked many time that uh, which is the test uh, which, which test is conducted uh, to confirm the typhoid so to confirm the person have particular uh, particular person have a typhoid to confirm that we perform the vidal test so it is confirmed by the vidal test next pneumonia pneumonia is a bacterial disease it is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae or hemophilus influenzae there are two causal organism two bacteria for it it is spread through sputum right and uh, what happened alveoli wall inflammation right alveoli wall inflammation takes place secretion of a protein rich fluid start from the alveoli so that these alveoli get filled with the fluid right and there is a no space there is a very small space for the oxygen or gases right so exchange of gases do not takes place properly and the person uh, cannot walk uh, uh, for the longer time cannot uh, uh, like uh, uh, travel for the longer time right so it it can't it can't do any hard work and all that right because the exchange of the gases become limited it is very common in the old people right common cold common cold is a viral disease and you know nowadays even uh, doctor says that you have a viral disease or viral viral fever so that is caused by uh, a virus named rhinovirus it, it affect nose and respiratory passages guys it do not affect the lungs nose and nose and this nose and respiratory passages in this one till trachea right and it is transmitted through the inhalation of droplet a person having the cough and the cold sneezing and the droplet you inhale it will go inside your body right so it is spread to the common cold clear yes sir we will be asked with the causative agents uh, which is sorry there the question will be about the causative agents exactly right. exactly they can ask you the vector they can ask you the causative organism and uh, just uh, like i have told you they have already asked the vidal test they can ask you test right so both kind of the question even sometime they ask you that is it a bacterial disease viral disease or fungal disease and when this comes in the uh, like if they will ask you pneumonia is bacterial disease viral disease then many of the people uh, will get confused that it is caused by virus caused by bacteria fungi and all that even you get this kind of questions so you have to remember what kind of the organism is it second which is the causal organism and the most of the question which come as a match the following there will be the one side there will be disease another side there will be 
कॉजल होते हैं दैट कैन बी क्वेश्चन राइट यस देन मलेरिया मलेरिया व्हाट कैन बी क्वेश्चन आई विल कीप ऑन टेलिंग यू राइट एंड द क्वेश्चंस आई हैव इनसर्कल्ड देम व्हिच आर द क्वेश्चंस राइट सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड फर्स्ट एंड आई विल आई विल कीप ऑन टेलिंग यू व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर द क्वेश्चंस एंड यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट राइट एंड आई विल डिक्टेट समथिंग इफ आई थिंक दैट दिस इज रिक्वायर्ड सो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज द मोस्ट इन्फेक्शियस व्हिच इज द इन्फेक्शियस ऑर्गेनिज्म और इज इन्फेक्शियस ऑर्गेनिज्म ऑफ मलेरिया so basically the infection takes place through the sporogyte right so malaria as we know that it is spread by protozoa it's a type of what kind of the protozoa sporozoite right a sporozoite when a mosquito bite a healthy person the sporozoite transfer to the salivary gland right transfer to the saliva because in the salivary gland of the mosquito these protozoa are found so they trans get transferred to the saliva of mosquito they get dissolved with the blood after getting dissolved with the blood they reaches to the liver when they reaches to the river the first step of asexual reproduction or first asexual reproduction takes place inside the liver they multiply rapidly and after the multiplication they form the small small sporozoites these are called merozoites right formation of merozoite takes place now the next step is that they transfer they are transferred to the rbc they goes inside the rbc when they goes inside the rbc they first they make a ring like a structure cell of sporozoite they make a ring like a structure right so this is called uh, signet ring right this is called signet ring so they make a signet ring structure after that they uh, increase their size and when they increases their size they also releases from uh, also releases a substance name is the hemojoint the symptom of malaria is that a person feel chilly cold and shiver and have a high fever right that kind that this is the function this these symptoms can be seen when hemojoint is getting released from the these uh, sporozoite right and uh, that is the symptom of malaria doctor doctor asked do you feel cold are you feeling shivering kind of the thing you have high fever sometime so after 72 hours of the infection this shivering symptom come shivering means now now this protozoa is releasing hemojoint you have to remember the hemojoint right that is released by the protozoa then it increases size and second round of asexual reproduction start in the rbc so what you have to remember infectious stage is sporozoite if you want please note it down infectious stage is sporozoite malaria infectious stage is sporozoite second first asexual reproduction takes place first asexual reproduction takes place in liver second asexual reproduction in rbc first asexual reproduction takes place in liver second asexual reproduction takes place in rbc now the next one these uh, uh, these sporozoite right uh, after after this second asexual reproduction they goes inside the rbc and they form the gamete one female gamete and another male gamete right after the formation of gamete now the sexual reproduction do not takes place in human body when a mosquito come and bite this infected person right a mosquito come and bite this infected person it takes the male and female gamete male and female gamete so male gamete is called microgametocyte and female gamete is called megagametocyte right so microgametocyte and uh, sorry macrogametocyte micro and macro micro is male gamete and macro is female gamete both fuses the fusion of micro and macro gamete takes place in the gut of mosquito right in the gut of mosquito formation of zygote takes place after that in the epithelial cell of the gut epithelial cell of the gut these multiply after multiplication formation of a cyst takes place and from the gut these sporozoite formation takes place the sporozoite will move from the gut to the salivary gland and again 
they spread like this. Is that clear or not? Tell me, guys. So what do you have to remember? Which is the infectious stage? Sporozoite. First is sexual reproduction, liver. Second is sexual reproduction, where? RBC. Third, they make signet ring signet form. Signet ring form. And fourth is hemojoin. Hemojoin, right? Released by the pathogen and causes the shivering and fever. Then sexual reproduction takes place in the gut of mosquito. Then sporozoites are found in the salivary gland. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Very good. So take the screenshot. Next disease is scariasis, right? Scariasis, uh, dysentery, filaria, and ringworm. So first dysentery. Dysentery is caused by Antamoeba histolytica, we know. Antamoeba histolytica goes inside small intestine. It reaches in the villi. It start digging the villi, right? And when it dig the villi, it go inside, deep inside the after uh, dissolving the alveolar wall, uh, uh, villi wall, it goes inside that and it ruptures the blood capillaries and mucus oozes out. So that, that, that's how the uh, blood with mucus come out through this tool, right? And uh, then there it start multiplying and make the uh, asexual reproduction, start asexual reproduction. It secretes a proteolytic enzyme known as cytolysin, right? That cytolysin damage the epithelial wall of villi, right? Is that clear? You have to remember the enzyme name, cytolysin, right? It erodes the intestinal wall. After eroding, eroding, uh, it's uh, it uh, the um, uh, it make a uh, cyst-like structure and multiply rapidly. Uh, the patient experience severe gripping pain in the stomach, right? So that is the dysentery. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ascariasis. Ascariasis basically it affect the small children, right? So ascariasis, we know that it is caused by the round worm nomad ascaris limbricoid. And I have already told you that ascaris limbricoid or ascaris, they belong to uh, phylum nematoda or ascalmanthes. Previously we called used to call them nematoda. Now we call them ascalmanthes. Then it is found in small intestine. Uh, the worm suck the digested food, right? Children are the main target. The length of the worm can be 20 to 40 centimeter. Female is larger, so it's 40 centimeter. Males are smaller, they are 20 centimeter. Egg remain alive for several years, right? They spread through water, food, fly, and cockroach. They cause weaker and anemia in children. So they make their uh, children weak and causes anemia because they suck the nutritive part of the digested food. Okay. Filaria. Filaria disease is also known as elephantiasis. It is caused by Wuchereria bancrofti. Wuchereria bancrofti belong to Platyhelminthes phylum. The male worm of 40 millimeter and the female worm is of 80 millimeter. This organism is nocturnal. This is very important. What does it mean? It means that the organism, uh, they during the daytime, the filaria worm goes inside the, uh, deeper inside the body. Means it is found deeper inside the blood vessels. So in the daytime, if you will take the sample of the patient, there are fair enough chances. 90% chances you will not be able to detect the filaria. But, so that's why a filaria patient is suggested to give the blood at the time of night. At the time of night, these blood worm, these uh, filaria worm, they come at the surface of the body, right? Superficial uh, uh, arteries and veins, right? And, and that, that's why this organism is nocturnal. The vector is culex. We have already uh, learned that. And what, what they do, they block the lymphatic vessels and cause a swelling of the affected part basically foot leg or scrotum part get affected or get swell 
because of the filing. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Next is ringworm. It's a very common disease, ringworm. So uh, this is the fungi which is responsible for the ringworm. Uh, there are three species, that is microsporium, trichophyton, and epidermophyton. They are responsible for the these uh, ringworm. And uh, appearance of scaly and lesion on the various part of the body. That is the characteristic feature of the ringworm. Clear? Yes, sir. Immunity. Development of immunity. Immunity to disease. Immunity. So what is the immunity? What is immunity? Can anybody tell me what is immunity? Sir, it is the overall ability of the body to fight against a pathogen is known as the immunity. Right. Very good, Arpit. Good. Right. So the capability of our body to fight against the disease is called immunity. Simple. So immunity can be how, how it can develop. Now, this is the part which you need to understand. This the, In this part, there are very few things which you need to cram. Before this immunity part, whatever I have told you that you have to cram it, right? And this is the only thing which I am saying you to cram, right? There are very few things. Uh, in the biology class, uh, I suggest you have to cram only 10 to 15 percent. I mean, that you do have to cram in the chemistry and the physics also, right? So uh, you have to cram only this 15 to 20 percent part. Rest of the part you have to understand. So this part you need to develop a concept. How does the development of immunity take place? Immunity first de immunity development takes place through disease. When a person suppose that I am a healthy person and I do not have any disease. So when the first uh, disease pathogen will come inside to my body, then the disease will start infecting. Now my cellular system WBC will start making antibodies against it and trying to fight with it and after a few days i'll be okay but for that particular disease immunity will develop inside because that antibody which have been formed they will be already there suppose that in the next month again same the pathogen infect me i will not be affected by that disease because already there is antibodies are already present over there some antibodies life remain alive for a few months a few days or they may be for lifetime even, right? Vaccination. Second thing, development of immunity. There are small kids, which the newborn yeah, uh, one, you must have seen, we go through the vaccination program. When the vaccine, what is the vaccine? Vaccines are dead or very weak pathogen of particular disease. When dead pathogen are given in the form of vaccine to the young one, so what happened inside their body, uh, development of antibodies start because body do not know they are uh, they, either they are the living or they are the dead uh, organism. So body start making antibody against. So that is called vaccination. The development of immunity through vaccination. The third one is antitoxin. Antitoxin is uh, like basically they are the uh, some compound again the toxins and sometimes they are made in the some other body of the animal and they are transferred in the form of injection in our body. So we develop uh, or sometime uh, we take the toxin and immunity like antibodies develop against that toxin. So it develops inside the human as well, right? So development of the immunity can take place through ways, by through ways. Uh, first, immunity through disease. Second, immunity through vaccination. Third, immunity through antitoxin. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next, types of immunity. Now, immunity can be innate, first type, right? They can be innate or they can be acquired. So, first type of the immunity. Innate immunity means inborn immunity, right? Like congenital disease, inborn disease. In the same way, innate uh, immunity means inborn disease, immunity. Means we take birth with these immunity, right? Means we take birth with the, these mechanism which protect us from the disease. Uh, in innate or inborn immunity, it is non-specific. 
means this is not meant for particular disease. It work against multiple disease. Uh, it is found since birth, and there are four type of barrier in innate immunity: physical barrier, physiological barrier, cellular barrier, and cytokine barrier. In physical barrier, please try to understand and please focus. Uh, in physical barrier, like skin is a physical barrier. It do not allow the entry of any kind of the pathogen like bacteria, virus, fungi, and all that. It do not allow. So that is a physical barrier. Second, physiological barrier. Suppose that I have swallowed some bacteria which are the infectious by default. Then what will happen? My saliva will have an enzyme called lysozyme that will kill. If it will skip from the saliva, it will be killed by the HL in my stomach. You must have studied in class 11 digestive system. Then cellular barrier. Even if the pathogen is very strong that it can cross the physical barrier and physiological barrier, when it reaches in the blood, what happens? There are WBC, there are particular cells, WBC, they start fighting against it. Either they will eat it or they will kill it through the production of antibodies. Last but not the less, cytokine barrier. What is the cytokine barrier? In cytokine barrier, what happens when a cell get infected by any virus or any other pathogen? Basically, the virus. Then what happens that this infected cell produces a particular kind of the compound or protein. That protein makes the nearby cell immune against that disease, right? And it is stopped or try to stop the spread of disease, right? Clear, native immunity? Acquired or adaptive immunity. This immunity is taken or we acquire after the birth. Developed by response of microbes. This is specific to particular disease. It lasts for the whole life or some time duration, right? I have already told you that antibodies sometimes they live for few uh, years and sometimes for the whole life. So there are two types of the immunity, active immunity and passive immunity. Active immunity is produced inside the organism's own body, right? Suppose that I have been infected by coronavirus and I fortunately, I survived, right? So now inside my body, there is active immunity against the coronavirus. But you must have seen during those days when the COVID was there, uh, many of the people used uh, uh, have been uh, supplied uh, uh, that what to say, plasma therapy, right? So what is the plasma therapy? Now what happened? A patient, another patient got the uh, infected by coronavirus. And he is not capable to recover, right? His body is not that much strong so that he could recover. Then what will happen? I am already infected. I have my blood have already antibodies. Now my blood will be taken out. From my blood, the plasma part will be extracted. From that plasma pl part will have antibodies. And that plasma with the antibody will be supplied to that person body, right? So he has taken my immunity. So that kind of the immunity is called passive immunity. So immunity is of two types. If it develops your own body, it is active immunity. If you <coughs> source it from some other body, <coughs> this is called passive immunity. Is it clear or not? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> now, the question frequently asked that infant immunity. What happened? Infant do not have any kind of the immunity. As you know, Infant do not take blood from the mother, right? Then what happened when a baby take birth after perturbation? Doctor suggests that the milk, uh, the first few days milk, like two or three days milk, a mother have to feed its child. What happened when mother feed uh, uh, the newborn baby? Uh, the initial days, uh, the milk which is secreted from the mammary gland of the mother, that is called colostrum. I have written over here, colostrum. That colostrum basically contain the immunity part, right? Antibodies. And that and those antibodies are transferred from mother's body to their young one. So in born, uh, newborn infant, they have passive immunity and that immunity they take from take it from their mother. 
Is that clear? Cholesterol have yes. antibodies, right? Okay. Now cellular immunity. Basically, I have already told you that the cellular immunity come from the WBC. They make the cellular immunity, right? Cellular barrier, right? Uh, here you can see uh, in the screen, this it is it must be visible to you that uh, there are type of WBC. You have to take this screenshot and you have to remember it as it is, right? Look, let me. I think it must be visible to all of you. Okay. Look. So there are WBC are of two types. Granulocyte and agranulocyte. Look, try to understand. Granulocyte and agranulocyte. These agranulocyte, they do not have uh, they do not have granules in the protoplasm, right? So granules in the protoplasm are not formed. They may be further divided. They, they are of two types, lymphocyte and monocyte. Lymphocytes are again of two types, right? B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte. So B lymphocyte, they are produced in liver and they produces antibody. T lymphocyte, they directly attack on the pathogen, right? So that is the way that's how they fight, right? B lymphocyte develop in liver and T lymphocyte develop in thymus gland, right? Lymphocyte, they are non-motile and non-phagocytic, means they do not eat bacteria. They produce antibody, so basically they are responsible for production of antibody. They destroy the microbe, toxins, and tumor cells. So that question, that is that is the question which I have been asked. It's very important kind of a question. Wait. Okay, right. So look. Fine. So they may be of two types, B cells and T cells. Uh -huh. Right. They may be of two cells, B cells and T cells. Right. So uh, they this is the question it has been asked that like which cells are responsible for killing the so our body have immunity or body have system to kill the cancer cell, right? Body have capability to fight the cancer cell. So they kill the tumor cells. 20 to 25 percent of total WBC are these lymphocytes. Uh, their life span is few days to some years. Then second comes the monocyte. They are the longest of largest of the WBC. They are the largest WBC. They are motile and phagocytic, means they can eat the bacteria. They engulf bacteria and cell debris, right? Their life span is 10 to 20 hours only, right? When the doctor takes the blood test and it's, it, it finds that the monocytes are more in number, it means the bacterial infection have taken place. Right? That's how they go through with the report and they analyze. Again, the granulocyte can be of two types, right? What are the type of the granulocyte? You can see now. So, granulocytes have the granules in their protoplasm. Their life span is four to five days. They may be of three types, eosinophil, basophil, and neutrophils. Eosinophil, they increases their number in allergy, asthma, and hay fever. 
they help in dissolving blood clot that is a question important question they help in dissolving blood clot they are non phagocytic they are similar like lysosome they destroy the protista then basophils basophils releases heparin serotonin and histamine they are least in count then neutrophils they are most numerous of wbc 60 to 65% they eat harmful germs and that's why they are phagocytic in nature okay so this is the all about the cellular barrier please take this screenshot and remember all these questions remember it i have made this chart for you only for the uh, your medical examination right so it's very important don't take it lightly i have made this for your convenience right so that you get uh, easily the questions is that clear yes sir now antibodies so this is the structure of antibody and you know this is the cartoon diagram so this blue color are heavy uh, uh, chain and these this this one this one are lighter chain right this is the site of antigen binding site from here it bind the antigen and destroy it right so there are two lighter chain so this is called l2 and there are two heavier chain that is called h2 so it is also represented by h2 l2 right uh, now how does the allergy causes so that you need to understand what is the allergy allergy is nothing this is the uh, symptom uh, which tells you that uh, The, uh, the attack have been done on your body by some pathogen so when any antigen attack so below the are skin like subcutaneous part of the body inside the skin right so there are some cells which keep on flowing between the tissues these cells are called mast cells right mast cells are found below the skin mast shall die because of the attack of the antigen <coughs> when they die they will release a substance called uh, histamine you have to remember the name of the substance so mast cells are responsible for allergy they release a substance known as the histamine when histamine releases where the pathogen have attack suppose that pathogen have attack over here so mast cell will die and histamine will be released so they will dilate the capillary they will widen the capillary the permeability increases permeability of blood increases in capillary more blood flow takes place at those area become red so the more blood flow takes place in those area that's why the area become red itching takes place and inflammation takes place due to histamine right that is the alert is that clear mast cell histamine number of time they have been asked clear guys allergy what was the yes, antibody sir. which was used in allergy yes yes so uh, what was the antibody which was used in allergy antibody comes actually now the pathogen have penetrated just in your subcutaneous skin right where the blood is not present it have not gone inside the blood stream got it yes sir when it will go inside the blood stream then the antibody production will take place right okay sir hiv so hiv is a retrovirus remember the first one foremost question means it is made up of rna it look like corona virus you can see because their structure is almost similar so look the outer covering is made up of glycoprotein then there is a viral envelope made up of toxic protein inside there is again a layer that is called capsid capsid is a type of toxic protein inside the capsid there are two rna and two reverse transcriptase enzyme right what is the function of reverse transcriptase enzyme we have studied it multiple time i have repeated it again the formation of what what is the function formation of dna on rna template right so first it enter in the body then it make DNA, rna its own dna on rna template right with the help of reverse transcriptase enzyme how did the suppress so aids is a not a disease it's a syndrome aids is a not a disease person do not die because of the aids so what happened it suppress the immune system it collapse because of this virus immune system get collapse 
it kills the T cells, B cell, T cell. Immune system collapse. Then any disease which comes to the person that remains forever at the body of that infected person, right? So that diseased person. Most of the people, 99% of the people who are affected with the, who are infected with the uh, HIV or uh, this, this virus, then they die because of the TB. Why? Because more or less, all of us have some or little amount of the TB bacteria. They do not spread or infect us because our immune system keeps them suppression, right? Because of pollution. So when immune system gets suppressed, the TB bacteria develop and TB get developed and it never ends, right? It, it, it kills the person, okay? So HIV was discovered by Robert Gallo and Montagnier. It reduces the number of B cell and T cell. Remember, that is the question. In AIMS, this question already asked. It's a retrovirus. The medicine, you'll surprise, number of times the medicine have been asked. So, azithromycin, ribavirin, zidovirudine, these are the medicine against the AIDS for HIV. Note it down, please. Done. Yes, sir. Okay. Now the life cycle of HIV. How does it infect? Look. HIV have a reverse transcriptase enzyme and RNA. The outer cover after an infection falls down and this outer cover is called host, host fell down. We have already discussed that how the virus infect in molecular genetics. RNA and virus goes inside the cytoplasm or protoplasm. Then in protoplasm, this RNA, uh, the DNA is formed on template of RNA with the help of reverse transcriptase enzyme. Formation of DNA takes place. When the formation of DNA takes place, uh, this DNA will integrate, right? And it will go inside the nucleus. After nucleus, going inside the nucleus, the viral DNA transported across the nuclear membrane and then integrate with the host DNA, like this way. When integrate with the host DNA, it capture or take over the mechanism of host DNA. Now it is start making its own DNA. DNA making a start. Then what happened? It this its own DNA, it come out of the copies of DNA come out of the nucleus, and now the new viral uh, new viral RNA is used as the genomic RNA, and they make the viral protein. Now, this viral DNA make viral RNA and make the protein. Now, assembly of protein and virus takes place, uh, protein and DNA takes place, sorry, protein and RNA takes place, and formation of new virus takes place. That's how the formation of new virus takes place in our cell. Tell me, is that clear? Is it clear? Okay, can you repeat it once? My internet was a little lag lagging. Okay, no issue. Look, <clears throat> what I said, that first virus will come and infect the cell. When virus will infect the host cell, the this outer cover cover will fall down. This is called host. Inside the virus protoplasm, this RNA and reverse transcriptase enzyme is released. When it goes inside the host, with the help of reverse transcriptase, it makes DNA, its own DNA on RNA template. DNA from protoplasm enter into nuclear inside nuclear envelope. After entering nuclear envelope, this viral DNA, this viral DNA, it uh, it, uh, it integrate with the host DNA, right? So formation of, now when they integrate with the host DNA, it capture or take over the host DNA, right? After capturing or taking the host DNA, it form a new viral RNA, right? On the DNA template, it make again viral RNA, right? 
right? This viral RNA come out of the nucleus. It is start translation and make protein. After that, that protein and viral uh, viral RNA it get assembled and formation of new virus takes place. That's how it it is spread inside the human cells. Clear? Yes, sir. Now cancer. Look. What is a cancer basically? Cancer is nothing but this is uncontrolled division of cell. Every as uh, you will be surprised to know that there is no particular target organ for the cancer. You must have seen the cancer can cause from the head to the toe any body part of the why? By the way, other diseases have a particular target organ, right? So, but cancer do not have any target organ. The reason behind it, uh, every cell have the cancerous gene. Every body cell have cancerous gene. All the cells of our body have cancer, right? What happened? They remain in the silent condition or the dormant condition. During the course of development, they have been made silent. There are certain compounds which activate these genes, these oncogenes, right? So oncogene, so oncogene is the cancer causing gene and oncology is called study of the cancer. You must have seen in the hospital, there is a department, cancer department that is called oncology. So oncology is called study of cancer gene, right? Oncogene. This oncogene is found in silent condition or dormant condition. There are certain chemicals which activate this oncogene or trigger or activate this gene. These substances are called carcinogen. What is the carcinogen? Carcinogens are the chemical causes cancer, right? So carcinogen why? Because this carcinogen activate the uh, this uh, oncogene. What are those? They may be nicotine, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, cadmium, lead, arsenic. They all are uh, uh, carcinogen because they spread the cancer. Is that clear or not? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now, normal cell take. Uh, 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 okay. Fine. So, uh, normal cell take place in. Um, uh, sorry. It normally takes place in the cells which are frequently divided. So, which are the favorite target of the cancerous gene? Basically, the cancer disease caused by those uh, cells which are frequently dividing. What are those cells? When we sleep down, you must have seen when you wake up at the early morning, you, you feel that there is a thick layer of something uh, around your mouth. What is that? That is a layer of a cell. Uh, overnight, the formation of new cell uh, takes place, right? And that cell layer is called swab cells. Right. That's why the cancer cause inside this part, cheeks, inner part of the cheek, because cells keep on dividing. Cells of intestine, they keep on dividing at every 24 hours. Right. So that's how the uh, favorite tar uh, target cells for the cancer are frequently dividing cells. Right. Skin, digestive tract, liver, and gut, they are the places from where cancer originates. Then what happens when, when the cells start forming continuously? They make a lump of cell or uh, a part of uh, the mass of cell. That mass of cell is called tumor or neoplasm. Neoplasm means newly developed part, right? So tumor or neoplasm. These tumor cells or neoplasm cells, they compete for nutrition with other cells. That's why a cancerous person become weak. Because cancer cells take the nutrition and they compete for the nutrition with the other cells. That's why the cancer person become weak. Second thing, they release a harmful protein which is spread in the blood and causes damage, it damages the body. Tumor can be of two types. Benign, non-malignant or cancerous or malignant, right? Benign tumor or non-malignant cancers, they are found at particular site, at particular site where they actually form. Suppose that a person have got cancer in the hand. So this tumor will be confined only in this hand. 
there are two options either remove the tumor in case it has spread the whole hand you have to remove the hand but if you will remove the hand or remove that part then the person will survive person will not die because that is confined for particular organ particular part but this malignant is very dangerous right the person with the malignant cancer to be very frank uh, cannot be saved right what happened in the first stage it grow very slowly there is no symptom of uh, uh, primarily in primary stage right the last stage you will come to know at the last stage that particular person have been detected with the, this one very clean in the last stage this tumor tissue start breaking right that tumor tissue will start break in the fragment those fragment will keep on flowing in the blood right and the part wherever they will reach they will start making another cancerous tumor on that part so by this way this this uh, fragment they spread in the whole body and the cancer is spread in the whole body that's why it is not possible to save that person when the time or the uh, the stage at when the uh, this tumor uh, start spreading across the body in the part of fragment this stage is called metastasis and you come to know in this cancer at the stage of metastasis and the person die there are diagnosis biopsy radiography and mri are the diagnostic uh, technique through which we detect the cancer tell me is it clear or not ana is it clear yes. abino yes sir yes sir okay heather arpit alia yes sir clear? very good uh now the, it comes to the drugs it's a very big chapter but it's very important you will get the question from the drugs they are few but they are they are there they have been asked now the types of drug drug you know drug we always take in the negative sense but drug is drug word is not a negative word nowadays you know that we medical shops are not called medical stores or medical shop we call them drug shop right so anything which trigger your nervous system is called drug that's it that is drug even tea that is a drug we take the tea it have a compound theanine theanine it activate our nervous system make us active so that is a drug in coffee there is caffeine it make us alert it activate our nervous system central nervous system means brain part so that is also a drug so there are certain category of the drugs uh, <laughs> so uh, you must have many of you must have seen in instagram reels and all that right uh, so the person who is a drunk we have differently the person who have taken the weed drunk like work uh, like we have differently the person who was taking marijuana we have differently the person who have taken heroin morphine they all we have differently because every drug have different impact right so on the basis of that impact we have divided drugs in particular category first kind of the drug are called psychotropic drug you will get the question which of the following is psychotropic drug right so first drug is psychotropic drug right what are the psychotropic drug they act on the brain means psyche they work on the psyche they act on the brain they alter the behavior of person they change the behavior of person they are uh, uh, they they uh, affect the consciousness capacity of person right so uh, consciousness it reduces capacity of person working capacity of person reduces psychotropic drug are of following type right they are of three type first tranquilizer tranquilizer they lessen the tension they release the tension uh they release they lessen the tension anxiety and they promote the calmness they calm down they make a person calm down without sedating effect means they will not uh, cause for the sleeping right person will not sleep but they will calm down the person these kind of drugs are called tranquilizer right when those people who are like uh, uh, the fear kind of people shocked kind of the people or uh, the those people who have a high, like hypertension and uh, uh, hyperactive people we give these kind of tranquilizer injections and the people calm down right then sedative or hypnotic drug 
sedative from the word itself it is clear it means sleep it induces sleep right so they switch off the central nervous system right the system nervous system gets switched off they reduces the excitement they are sleep inducing drugs those who are mad kind of the people we can give them right opiate or narcotics opiate or narcotics so they are uh, they suppress the brain activity and relieve the pain they are the pain killer basically, basically opiate we give them uh, where a high dose of the uh, pain killer are required right they are used uh, they are used in cough relief vomiting and diarrhea they are also used in these medicines rather otherwise they are the pain killer right stimulant they temporarily stimulate the nervous system and make a person alert or active right is that clear or not all drugs clear psychotropic drug tranquilizer have been asked hypnotic have been asked these two have been asked right so that's the psychotropic drugs are of three kind tranquilizer sedative opiate and stimulant clear iram yes sir opiates from where they are extracted opiates are extracted from opium opium the biological name of opium is papaver somniferum it is a member of papaverisi by the way you need not to remember the family as i have just written over here right the, because this family is not part of your syllabus so uh, the name you must remember the name is papaver somniferum what exactly they do they uh, put this kind of the scars in the capsule of the cap, uh, opium uh, this white color latex it dried and become a, a black color or brownish or black color then at the early morning what they do they have a leaflet of iron and they collect they scratch it right and collect from here even this capsule uh, uh, are capsules are sold in the higher uh, uh, price so uh, first thing this opium is paper from second <coughs> we extract morphine the compound which is found in opium is morphine it is analgesic means pain relieving second heroin is made from morphine or opium it is a white brown crystalline powder it is 200 times stronger than opium it is very concentrated now you can imagine 200 times stronger than opium third uh, the fourth one that is the smack it is also called a brown sugar it is cheap it is called the poor man's heroin this question i have been asked poor man's heroin the smack is heroin. because this is cheaper than uh, the heroin right and is less effective than heroin uh, but the same the both are the sources the source is the same that is the morphine clear yes sir now is stimulant drug right so the those all drug psychotropic drug they were suppressive kind of the nature right A stimulant drug which stimulate a person, like the person have, have gone in depression, we need to give them a stimulant. Right. First thing is caffeine. When you feel sleepy, you take a hard coffee. You want to remain awake, and uh, you want to remain alert. Then what you do? You take this strong coffee. It is a mild stimulant extracted from coffee. It is white, crystalline, slightly bitter powder. It improve the performance of a person. Right. cocaine cocaine uh, from where it have been uh, it is extracted this question i have been asked so cocaine is extracted from the erythroxylan coca it is white color crystalline and bitter it is used as local anesthesia it stimulates central nervous system and the third one is crack crack is the smokable derivative of cocaine clear stimulant last but not the least psychedelic drugs 
so basically psychedelic drugs they are hallucinogen they act mainly on the central nervous system and greatly alter the thought and thought perception uh, of a person and feeling of a person they are very dangerous right these are the people who take the drug and they live in another world right uh, psychedelic drugs are used by those like uh, on those people on which heroin morphine smack alcohol and all that is not effective they are the like uh, and they are those people who are taking these psychedelic drugs the ultimate uh, destiny for them is a death nothing else a painful death very painful death, right so uh, hallucination uh, they act on the central nervous system they greatly alter the thought and the perception feeling and perception of a person they are vision producing drug vision producing drug mean the person have taking the drugs and uh, he is like uh, uh, he is uh, like he fell down on the garbage but he will feel that he is in heaven right that kind of the feeling so uh, they are vision producing drug or they may create a nightmare for a person right a person feel very horrible kind of the situation so they are vision uh, the most uh, the uh, rather than uh, why i i would say the worst drug is lsd LSD it is a crystalline drug it is obtained from a dyed scleroderm um, scleroderm are a fruiting of fungus right dried scleroderm 